Hey, this is Eric. I'm going to go over selecting features and looking at the attribute table in QGIS. This video assumes that you have QGIS installed on your computer and you know how to find data for it. I'm not going to be able to cover that in this video. So, um, so if you need that, please stop now and go find that somehow, some other way. Um, okay, so in my favorites, I have some files already loaded here in QGIS, and I in particular have this shapefile of rat sightings in New York City in the fall of 2014. So I'm opening that, and you can see it on the map here. You can see um, each of these points, which each one representing a particular rat sighting, and um, that's a start, but we don't know much about each particular rat sighting, and we might want to know more about them. In this case, there's actually a lot more about each one in the file, and the way we get to see it is, um, one way we do it is select the layer and right click on it, and we go to open attribute table. I'm going to hit escape and show you another way to do that. Up here, there's this table icon. And when you hold your mouse over it, it says open attribute table. That's what we want also. OK, so what that does is it opens a new window that looks, um, it looks a lot like a spreadsheet. It acts like a spreadsheet in a lot of ways. You can, you can sort some of these, although I guess that's not going to be a useful one to sort. This one might be useful because it's the zip code. Um, 83, I don't think, is a zip code. <clears throat> okay, so that's nice. Um, but what, what does this spreadsheet have to do with our map? Each row in this table refers to a point on the map. Each row contains information in the form of attributes for a point in our file. In this case, it's points, but it could be lines or polygons. Um, and if we select one of these by clicking on the number over here on the left, you can see down here on the right that the feature that that row refers to became highlighted. In QGIS, by default, you'll see things as bright yellow when they're selected. That's fine if you're just looking through the table and you want to select something. But what if you want to select a particular feature? Say I was down in here, somewhere in the northern part of Brooklyn. The way you would do that is go up to the toolbar and click on Select Features by Rectangle. That changes the tool that you're using to be um, a tool where you can either click on features and they get selected, or you can actually draw a rectangle around features and they become selected. If we go back to the attribute table, if we scroll down a bit, we should start finding, see, there. these are the ones that are selected as we scroll through. If you didn't feel like scrolling through to find the ones that were selected, there's this button up here, Move Selection to Top. That's pretty handy. Uh, except it doesn't seem to be doing anything this time. Oh. That's because we have some sorting happening. Huh. That's better. <clears throat> okay. So 
So that's that's great if you're looking for things in the same geographic area. If you want to select them in ways other than by as a rectangle or as a single feature, there are some other ways in here, such as by radius. So we could choose a radius down here. Um, if you wanted to select everything except what you have selected right now, there's a button on the attribute table that looks like this, invert selection. When we use that, you can see uh, that happens sometimes. So I had the select by radius tool active. When I clicked on the map and it deselected everything. So I'll select those again, go back to the attribute table, and invert the selection. And now I'll tab back. And you can see that the ones that I had selected are no longer selected. And um, if you want to deselect things, you could either do what I did accidentally there, or you could click this button, deselect features from all layers. That is also available to you right here in the attribute table. Okay, so all of those things are fine as long as you're trying to select just things in the same geographic area. Often though, what you want to do is select things by an attribute. That's part of what makes vector data great, is you can you can filter things by by the important data about them um, in the background here. So, for instance, I think the most one of the more interesting columns in the spreadsheet is location type. Uh, the name got cut off when I converted it to a shape file. In this case, I think maybe the one to two family dwellings would be interesting to see. So if you wanted to do that, you use this button up here, select features using an expression. Before we do that, I want to show you that the same exact button is available right here. It's the same button. It does the same thing. Okay, so when I click on it, it's going to bring this up. <clears throat> this is a dialog that expects down here in the bottom an expression. An expression that QGIS will use to decide whether the features in your layer get to get selected or not. <clears throat> there are lots of things in here. Um, I'm not going to go over all of them. QGIS actually has pretty nice documentation in here. You're probably not going to use super advanced things, but there are a lot of functions in here that you might want to check out. But for now, I think you're going to be pretty satisfied by just going down to fields and values. And you should see all of your fields listed here. All of the fields that are in the attribute table are listed here in order. And I can click on location T, location type, and I can ask QGIS to load all the unique values. And they show up right here. Pretty handy. Um, so I can, what I want is an expression that says, show me all the location types with um, that are one to two fa family dwellings here. So in QGIS, you can double click location T, choose the equals operator. So everything where location T is equal to something. In this case, something is one to two family dwellings. The quick way to do this is just double click it. So I didn't actually have to type anything, but it generated this for me. You can also type it out if you want to. And you can do more advanced things, such as um, 
saying basically this and that, or this or that. For now, we're just going to do this simple select by expression, and the way you make this actually work is you click the select button right here. And you can see in the map, if I go over to the map, or I have to close this first, you can see that a bunch of things were selected. I'm going to go back to my to the pan tool so I don't deselect all of that. And you can see that they're actually pretty well distributed throughout the city, except in Manhattan, which probably makes sense because there are fewer one to two family dwellings there. The next thing you might want to do is actually start start pruning more things out of this. So I have one selection and I want to move some other things out. Maybe I want to remove all the things, all the features in Manhattan. I would go back up to the select features using expression and create an expression that does that. I'm going to go to fields and values, um, city. I'll load those up and see what we have. So in here we have, obviously we have, it looks like postal cities often for Queens, um, but we also have New York and that should do for Manhattan. So same as before, city equals just once New York. And instead of clicking select, select would select all of the things in Manhattan. I want to remove those from selection. As you might imagine, you could also add those to the selection. So then you would have all of the rat sightings in one to two family dwellings and all of the rat sightings in Manhattan all put together like a union. Um, so I can click remove from selection and when I do you can see that all of the all of the yellow features have disappeared. Okay, so I have this data set now. What if I wanted to use this data set later or for other things? I can save just these selected things in their own file so that I always have just that file available to me, just those features. This is useful, say, if you're going to put something online and you want to reduce your file size, that's a big issue with putting things online. Or if you just, you want to reduce the file size on your computer, or you just don't want to show other features on your map. All of those are valid reasons to select some features and move them to a new file. Remember, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not cut and pasting, I'm not moving the features, I'm not actually moving them out, I'm just copying them to a new file. So the way you do that is you right click on the layer name and go to save as. We've seen this dialog before a few times. Um, in this case I'm just going to go to the desktop and I'm going to create a folder. I was doing this earlier so I already have a name here. Make sure you pick one that actually makes sense. I'm not sure what was going on there. Okay, I think I fixed it. Okay, so that's all normal. I made a new folder for it and I gave it a name. I'm going to keep the same CRS. Um, we're in State Plain, Long Island. The only difference is we want to make sure we save only the selected features by clicking that. 
and then I'm going to add them to my map so that we can see it and I'm going to hit OK and depending on how big the file is that should happen relatively quickly and I'm going to hide the old file and you can see just those things that we had selected are showing up now. Okay, so that's that's a quick look at attribute tables, selecting things in QGIS, and then saving those selections in QGIS. Hope that was helpful.